and welcome to an installment of Public Safety Chats, where you'll hear from experts here at Forsyth Tech about educational and workforce opportunities in their field. Today, we'll be speaking with Brian Knight. Brian Knight is our program director for our fire and rescue certification program and our Office of State Fire Marshal Director. Brian is a volunteer member of the Wahlberg Fire and Rescue Department and retired from the Winston-Salem Fire Department after 25 years. He is a graduate of Forsyth Tech's Fire Protection Program and completed his bachelor's degree in emergency and disaster management at Western Carolina University. And currently, Brian is working on his master's degree. Welcome, Brian. Glad to be here. Can you provide an overview of the typical salary range and benefits package for professionals entering the fire and rescue field, including the current number of job openings and the frequency of those new opportunities? Well, in our area, you know, it's pretty broad. Um, you can expect uh, entry salaries anywhere from, say, the mid-30s on up to some are advertised now upon graduation successfully from academies. Uh, can push that fifty to sixty thousand dollar range. Um, as with any public service uh, job, you know the benefits packages are, are you know what can you know be a good recruitment tool. We've got uh, you know the standard medical, dental, vision offered. Uh, we've got state and private retirement plans, four hundred one ks. We have educational incentives for some of the employees and even some of our partners uh, offer uh, military benefits as well which could bring that starting salary up as far as the job openings they're numerous uh, you know it's hard for anybody to keep up and it's really hard to nail down a number but I can tell you today we've got 64 students throughout our programs here on campus today that are either hired or potentially hired uh, by partners in our service area and we're looking to add about 30 more in two weeks. So it's mm. obvious that there are several departments in our area that are in need of volunteer and paid uh, membership. Uh, so we're just here trying to provide their training. Definitely, and outside of the actual job functions of a paid professional, uh, the state of North Carolina and across the country, there's still a high need for volunteers, is that correct? 100%, there's still so much of our state a little on the, the nation that's protected solely by 100% volunteer departments. Um, most of our departments here in our service area are combination, which means they still depend primarily, you know, at least some of them primarily upon um, volunteer help from community members uh, in order to be successful. So vo volunteers are, are, are just as important as our career staff in our area. Very much needed in our community. So can you tell us uh, what career advancement opportunities are available for individuals in this field and what steps can they take to move up the ranks and transition into specialized roles? Well, they're numerous. You know, our, our, a lot of our partners, when you come out of an academy, you're a firefighter or, you know, a, 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 starting, a starting level, but then there's, there's different ranks. There's different uh, levels to the career ladders, whether it's, you know, the driver or engineer or lieutenants or sergeants or captains and, uh, you've got operations, you know, divisions, you've got executive leadership, uh, but you're not just confined to, uh, you know, fire department roles. Some folks get in, have, uh, you know, a change of interest, and they do swaps to fire marshal bureaus. They're interested in public education, inspections, arson detection. Um, you know, some of those get their appetites wet and, and want to specialize in, you know, ladder functions or technical rescue, uh, uh, specialty level positions that would require more training that, you know, we also offer here through the community college. So your area is quite broad. Quite broad and, and quite busy, <laughs> yes sir. So what types of ongoing training and professional development are essential for career growth in this field and how do your programs support these? Yeah, it's so, you know, the, the thing in our field is you never want to repeat your rookie year 30, 30 times. Mm -hmm. You know, you, we, we, we deliver training that help you um, meet the, the standard minimum requirements of NFPA. Mm -hmm. And from there, you know, the sky's the limit. We really hope that that's the catalyst that drives folks into wanting to be better mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and better themselves. Because, I mean, at the, at the point you sign on uh, to public safety, you know, your commitment to the, to the community. And, and everyone deserves your best, not just you. Absolutely, we yeah. definitely want the best and you're gonna get the best at First Side Tech coming out Absolutely. of your program. Yes, sir. So what are the most significant challenges that professionals in this field face and how does your program help them meet those challenges? 
you know, there's some broad lenses with that as well. Um, you, you, you talk to the new, you know, someone who's new wanting to get into it, just interested, you know, their, their biggest challenge is where do I get my training and how do I afford it? You know, for those that are on the job, uh, or have been here quite some time, you know, you get into the, you know, occupational hazards or, or mental and physical health, which are both very, very, very important, you know, to make sure uh, that, it, that everyone's staying healthy. Uh, some of our executive leadership, you know, their challenges they look at is the retention of their employees or recruitment of new employees and how that looks. And so here at the college, we try to listen to our partners first and foremost and be able to identify where we can help with all those areas. You know, we've brought in uh, people from as far away as, as Florida to deliver specialty level rescue training, or we've uh, brought in folks from the you know critical incident stress management teams to deliver self-care and burnout prevention and, and those type of things. And then uh, as far as recruitment and retention, even with our internal of academy, we have numerous departments from across the state that come in, speak with our folks, they're invited, you know, we, we welcome them. Um, and then we're also constantly trying to identify how we can reach more potential employees up to and including this past year, you know, we've got into the high school, which is awesome. You know, we're catching them really early, really young. You know, most of our departments are hiring at 18 now, so we've got co uh, high school graduates. They're able to come out and join the workforce. So uh, we've got something to offer all of our partners, regardless of what your challenges are. We can, we can help you work through those. Well, that's great, Brian, and, and thank you and your team for everything that you do to, to help Forsyth Tech and Forsyth, Stokes County, and the state of North Carolina, you know, better prepare our first responders. Uh, please let the audience know how they can reach out to you uh, if they're interested in, in any of your programs. Absolutely. So if you're interested in any of our public safety programs here at Forsyth Tech, please, please reach out accordingly. But for me specifically, uh, I can be reached. My office number is 336 757 Three zero five one, or you can reach me by email, which is s is in Sam Knight K N I G H T at ForsythTech.edu. Be glad to hear from you. Well, thank you, Brian, and thank you, audience, and we look forward to having you uh, tune in next time on the next public safety chat.